take it away. I'll get. I'll turn these lights off. We had three people under 30 years of age working on this, so I had faith that this would be able to solve this. Thank you. My two sons and our. our tell me your name. Mark. Mark. And Aaron. And Aaron. Good job, Mark. Okay. Here we go. Now, I need to be able to advance this. You're not. No. 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 Oh, it's on. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All right. <laughs> Okay, uh, I titled this Old Bunker Hill, One Family's Perspective, and so we're going to start out, as I said, uh, with a historical perspective on this. Uh, I know we wanted to try to finish by two. I got about an hour's worth of material, and so somebody give me a high sign when it gets to two, and if the people who have to leave, uh, you know. This is a picture of Los Angeles uh, from the 1860s, uh, uh, um, taken showing Broadway. Which way is that on Broadway? We're looking south okay, okay. from, uh, this is Bunker Hill. This is where all everything happened. Bunker Hill was the southern extension of a low line of hills that came down out of Elysian Park. And uh, the photographer standing up on here on a spur that went down toward what's now where the city hall is. Uh, next slide. Jim, you'll recognize this. I swiped it out of your book. Thank you. Jim Dawson's here. I hope you don't mind, but this is a great map that shows Bunker Hill. Now that photographer was down here someplace and took a picture in that direction. So Bunker Hill really, Bunker Hill proper, was between 5th Street and Temple. Really, uh, Fort Moore Hill was over here extended up to Sunset and between about Broadway or Hill Street and uh, Flower and Figueroa on the north. Now if you went up on Bunker Hill and you looked west, this is what you'd see. We're standing up on the crown of Bunker Hill right now looking west uh, towards uh, Crown Hill. The Harbor Freeway went right through here later. And if you look up here, they built a Hollywood sign up there. And they put a Griffith Park Observatory right there. This is the area down where I said Broadway was. Uh, it started filling up with residences. The plaza is that way, and the city started growing south and came up against Bunker Hill. The, uh, go ahead to the next slide. Uh, Prudent Beaudry, who later was a, a mayor of Los Angeles, bought a tract of land up on that undeveloped Bunker Hill, and the rich people down below decided we want to live up here and build our mansions up here because it's quiet and it's away from all those other people down below. And there's a, a nice view, and it's, there are breezes that you can catch. It's not so hot up here. So the Crockers built their mansion. Uh, next slide. And Bradbury, Mr. Bradbury, who built the Bradbury building, he built his mansion up there. Next slide. There it is in later days with other buildings around it. Next slide. This is the uh, Hershey mansion. You can see broad streets. Lots of planting trees, nice sidewalks. This, and they built a hotel. This is the Melrose Hotel with the Richelieu that was part of it next door. Gordon, Gordon what, what's there now? What, what is where the Melrose and Richelieu are right now? What, what's the landmark? There's a parking lot. Oh. Yeah, but across the street. <laughs> Disney Center. Yeah. Yeah. Center's over, Disney Hall's over this way toward so, me. So if you're, if you're standing in front of Disney Hall looking east, you would have been looking at the Melrose and Regional at the right. Wow. Well, they built these hotels because there were lots of tourists who came to Southern California and it was being promoted and they came out when they uh, built a railway and you could get here on the train. Um, and they came out and they stayed for weeks at a time and some of them, many of them stayed forever. Another mansion that was built was the castle. This is the building that my family owned. Uh, this was taken and it was built about 1880 uh, by somebody named Donegan. That name is associated with it, and so is Armor, the Armor Meatpacking people, uh, built this place. And uh, it was uh, just a wonderful Victorian building back in the era when they had horses and carriages. This is decorated because this, I'm sure, was the day that they had, next slide, downtown, the Fiesta de las Flores, which was a kind of like a rose parade event that they had downtown. 
So I'm sure that's why they were all decorated and they went down and they took part in the parade. Oh, we'll come back once more. These old photographs are fascinating. I really highly recommend, if you haven't done this, to go look at the photo archives which are online. There's a guy sitting up here at the top of this building watching this. When you look at the details, it's fascinating. Next slide. This is the entry hall of the castle. Back in the Victorian era, it's just the, all the Victorian splendor of, of the interiors in the Victorian era. Um, my father, when he came back from World War II, uh, took down these gas light fixtures uh, so the building wouldn't burn down, I suppose. <laughs> and he painted everything white, which is the way I remember it. Uh, these things were gone, but there are high ceilings, there's a transom above the doorways. They all had glass doorknobs inside. Those were still there when I when was I was still one year the it was one family owned the building and lived there. Next slide. <clears throat> this is Persian Square. There's Bunker Hill up there with some houses being that have been built on it. Uh, that's the state normal school, which was a teacher's college. That um, is where the library is, the public library is right there. That moved over to Ver Vermont um, and briefly became UCLA before UCLA moved to uh, Westwood and is now LA City College. The billboard is sitting right there. Next slide. So this is Hill Street, their residences, there's a Crocker Mansion up there. Go ahead, next slide. This is Third Street. Hill Street, there's the Crocker Mansion. Which way are we looking? Looking west. Looking west. That's where they the Yeah, you'll see in a minute. Go ahead. It's starting to get filled up, and now it's really filled up. And Bunker Hill was considered to be an obstacle to the development of Los Angeles going westward. You had to go up over this hill to get any place west, or go way around it. Next slide. So they built a tunnel. They, drilled, they dug a tunnel underneath. <clears throat> and the people... Well, yeah, here's the west end of the tunnel. Angelinos loved their automobiles. They still do. And they went off to the western part of Los Angeles. Which tunnel is that? This Third Street Tunnel. This is the western end of it. Third Street Tunnel is still there. It looks a little different now than it did then. Next slide. And the people got tired of having to climb up the hill, so they, Colonel Eddie built Angel's Flight. And it goes up, you can see the Crocker Mansion. There's a, put an observation tower up there so you can go up and look at Los Angeles, yeah. But, but Angel's Flight isn't at Third Street anymore. No, it's not, they moved it. I'll say something about that, but no, they moved it. <laughs> at the top end of uh, the tunnel here, it's Clay Street. And at this time, when, Buck, when uh, Angel's Flight first went in, it crossed Clay Street at Street Grade, which was kind of inconvenient. So, next slide. He raised the track, and he bought new, built new cars, all of it in Sinai, which we still have. And in what year is this photo? Uh, this probably approximately 1910. We still have horses pulling carriages. Next slide. And this is later. He built a new pavilion. They built a new pavilion down here. This is the one we still have. Well, it's been reconstructed. Next slide. That's the upper pavilion, the original one. It's a little different now. This part got cut off. But we still have this. And the Crocker Mansion is gone. It didn't last very long. This is the Elks Lodge that replaced it. You can see a lady up at the top of the observation tower. The grand era of Bunker Hill with all the big mansions and the wealthy Angelinos and everything lasted maybe 15, 20 years at the most. Um, and those people moved to other places like West, uh, West Adams, Beverly Hills, Pasadena, other newer, more exclusive developments because uh, Bunker Hill changed and went into what they said was a decline. So they had built and filled this all up. This is um, Olive. That's the Mission Apartments. That's on Second and Olive. That lasted for a long time. There's the Melrose with its annex at the back. This is one of those picture postcard days for the Ch Chamber of Commerce when you can see the San Gabriel Mountains, you know, like during the Rose Bowl. 
when they, all the people around the country can see the St. Gabriel Mountains with snow on it. Go ahead. This is uh, Grand Avenue. That's the intersection of 3rd Street. Uh, this is Grand Avenue, or 3rd Street right here. That's the Lovejoy Apartments. That's the new, we'll see that more later. This apartment building is called the Fleur de Lay. Later it was renamed the Capitol Hotel. And um, you're gonna meet some of my friends in this presentation. The Markers owned this building as the Capitol, or some of my great friends. Is that looking uh, west or east? We're looking north, towards the San Diego Mountains oh. there. They built hotels because there are lots of people coming to Southern California uh, to uh, have vacations. This is the Fremont, which was at the corner of um, 4th Street and Olive. Remember these steps, because you'll see those later. And they built the Alta Vista. Anybody a John Fonte fan? Oh, yeah. He lived here in the 1930s. This is obviously a later photo, but this, it was built at that time. So this is, this, this, is, this is the apartment building featured in all of John Fonte's novels on Bunker Hill. Right. This is where uh, Arturo Bandini lived uh, as the Alta Loma in As the Dust. Next slide. And they built this one. This is the dome. This is obviously from a, a later date, but that was built up there too. And the Crest Hall. This is a, out of the newspaper announcing the, 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 the building of the, the opening of the Crest Hall. This became important to me because it's on 4th Street and South Bunker Hill Avenue. My uncle Clarence owned this. Or, Clarence owned this, right? Lawrence. Lawrence. Uncle Lawrence owned this one. Now, I have to read this to you because this is out of the newspaper. The Crest Home at the corner of 4th Street and Bunker Hill Avenue is one of the latest apartment houses for public accommodations having been opened in January 1905. It is a handsome four-story structure with bay windows on one side and all French windows opening on balconies on the east, all rooms being sunny with a fine view of the city and surroundings. It contains 36 rooms, renting at $2.50 to $5 per week. Suites are $6 to $14 a week, and housekeeping suites, $20 to $65 per month. Now that's the penthouse. <laughs> These apartments are arranged in two, three, and four rooms with a general parlor and private baths. Once every month, a musical is tendered by the management to the guests of the house. I want to go live there. <laughs> Now these people, uh, all of the, the angel flight wasn't enough. So up at the northern end by what is now City Hall, they built another funicular called um, the Court Flight. Uh, it, Gordon, can we just spend Go 25 ahead. more seconds trying to explain where Court Flight, court flight was? I, I'm going to show you okay. in some other slides and you'll be able to see. And they built it, they dug another tunnel. This is the Second Street Tunnel. This is the dedication of the Second Street Tunnel in 1924. Wow. So the next time you go through that, remember what a big civic event this was when they dedicated, when they built that tunnel. Can I just draw your attention to a... a yeah, the, go ahead. There was a sign there that said, Eat Carnation, Carnation Much. Much. Yeah. <laughs> remember I said, I said these old slides are fascinating. There's details in them that you wouldn't believe if you spent time looking at them. There's a covered wagon right there. <laughs> this is from a little bit earlier time, but I put this in for a couple of reasons. One is, there's the F.P. Fay building that John Fonte worked in. It's now a parking structure. And that's where the Grand Central Market is. Next slide. And this is the castle from 1924. It had already been turned into a rooming house. Many of these um, mansions were divided up into SRO, single room occupancy. There were 20 rooms in that building, and uh, they were turned into uh, single rooms. They uh, had a common bath on uh, each floor, and uh, they might have had a hot plate and a sink that uh, had been plumbed into the rooms, but they were rented out. Still looking pretty good. Oh, back, back up one more. That's the carriage house where uh, they kept the horses and carriages in the days that they had those. That was turned into two apartment units. 
Now this is from 1930, looking south on South Bunker Hill Avenue. There's the uh, castle. This is 333, we eventually own that one. And uh, you can see the Crest Hall down at the end of the street there. Next slide. This is, we just turned around and now we're looking north on South Bunker Hill Avenue. You can see the castle. There's the Alta Vista in the distance. If you know your Bunker Hill, you can see um, the Foss Heindel house right there. Look at the palm trees. They've been there for a while. They're maturing. This is looking north at Bunker Hill from Pershing Square. That's the Pacific Mutual building that's still there. Doesn't look the same, but it's still there. That's where, there's a church there, but that's where the Biltmore went. But this has gotten filled up with all these apartment buildings, and the mansions were turned in, for the most part, into uh, rooming houses. There were lots of people living up here who supported the businesses that were down here by patronizing them, but also working there. And it went into kind of a decline. Property values dropped, rents dropped, they dug some more tunnels. This is the Hill Street Tunnel, through that spur where the photographer took their undeveloped Bunker Hill photograph up here someplace, back towards Bunker Hill. This is for streetcars, novel hills. We're gonna go look at that place right up there. We're gonna climb up those stairs and go over here. Go ahead. Where, where is, so we're on Hill Street, we're looking north on Hill, this is basically Hill is second. First Street, First Street is, he's yeah. crossing the crosswalk, First Street's right here. You'll see it in a minute. Right, we'll go to the next slide. We just walked up there and we're sitting back here where the railing is. There's City Hall. This is a spur off of Bunker Hill that went down towards City Hall. And now we're sitting at the little park that's up above there. So we're looking south on Hill Street. First Street crosses right here. So, and this was the other side of This is now town. This, this is, we just climbed up those stairs. We saw the railing there and we came up to the top of the hill and we're sitting in the little park now looking back south on Hill Street. They call it Hill Street because there's a hill there. <laughs> this is actually not the other end of the Hill Street Tunnel. This is a Broadway tunnel. Broadway went through a tunnel. This is, that, this is a Fort Moore Hill up here. Uh, this is the intersection of Broadway and Sunset, which is now Cesar Chavez. The so, still there. There's the city hall to give you some so kind of is, orientation. Is the hill gone now? You'll see. Oh, <laughs> it's confusing. It's yeah, it's very, this is, it's really hard to get your mind around this when you look at these old photos because none of it exists anymore. It's gone. But in a minute, when you walk, get through this, you'll, you'll see. This is a shot by William Ray in the late 30s up on Bunker Hill. Um, the houses are maturing. And what happened was that um, the rents got low and the people who lived up here were um, uh, low income people, uh, working people who worked down below, had families, artists, writers, and what were called pensioners. Today, we would call them retirees or really the elderly poor. I think these people would really have been happy if they had a pension. I think they were scraping by on Social Security. Now, before we go off this one, I want you to look over there. There's, you see that building with two domes on it? That's up on um, Olive. Go ahead, next slide. That's the Olive Street Shul. It's the Congregation Beth Israel. It's a Jewish uh, synagogue that was up on um, Olive between 1st and 2nd Street got torn down in 1940. I never saw it. Uh, I was astounded to find when I poked around and found that <laughs> such a place existed up there. 1932, the Pattersons arrived on Bunker Hill. Came, they came out, they actually, my, uh, my grandparents, and this is my father, this is my grandmother, um, they came out from Nashville, Tennessee, but they're, uh, the family's really from Indiana. This is in the depths of the Depression. This photograph was taken probably about 1935, so they've been there for a couple of years. Um, now, we can leave it on this one. My grandmother's maiden name was Henderson.
This is the Anderson clan. Uh, that's my cousin Don is here. That, that's your father, right? Out there. Uh, on the right. Second. Over Second here. From the right. Right there. there, that's your father. Okay, that's my father. Oh. So Don and my father are actually first cousin. Don's my first cousin once removed. So this is Don's grandmother, my great grandmother, and grandfather, my great grandfather. Um, it, he was a coal miner in uh, Indiana, and uh, this whole family came out in the 1920s. Uh, most of them, not all of them, some of them stayed back, but almost all of them came to Los Angeles. Uh, my grandmother was the last of them that came out uh, in 1932, and there were a whole bunch of them. Now, <clears throat> my grandmother was sort of a self-made woman. Uh, she was the second oldest in the family, and when she got to the sixth grade, her parents kept having kids. They had a bunch, they had five sons. And two daughters? Five sons and two daughters? Don? Yeah. I think that's right. He's got to count them up. I've got to count them up. <laughs> and so when my grandmother got to be in the sixth grade, her parents said, that's enough schooling. You're a girl you don't need anymore. Come home. You're going to help take care of your brothers and sisters. My grandmother resented that for her whole life. But it's sort of a commentary on the state of women 100 years ago in the United States. I threw this in because I said it's the um, depths of the depression. You know the Nickel Diner downtown now, right on Main Street. That's Ernie's Five Cent Cafe. If you look at this closely, everything is five cents. <laughs> you could get beef stew, chili and beans, uh, hamburger, any anything. That's five cents. Gordon? Yeah. The Nickel Diner on Main Street is not called the Nickel because everything costs the Nickel. No, it's not. <laughs> but Bernie's Five Cent Cafe was. <laughs> All right, so I said my grandmother was kind of a self made woman. Well, here's what she did when she moved here she divorced my grandfather, she raised my father as a single mother. And she got a job down at Bullock's. Now all the Hendersons managed to get jobs in the 19 uh, depression, and they 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 did okay. Um, I don't. I think they came out with nothing, but they made it. Um, and my mother and her mother were landladies. What they would do is go in to these places and tell the owners, "I'm going to lease this place from you, and uh, I'll be responsible for it." And they would turn them into rooming houses if they weren't already. So this is 301, 303 on the corner of 3rd Street and Grand. She turned that into a rooming house. She turned that one into a rooming house. And she, 311, she and my father moved in there, occupied part of it, and that was a rooming house. But she had several other ones on Grand <laughs> Avenue. That's 311. They've been talking about Bunker Hill being a slum and being need, needing to be torn down from the 1920s. But the places were not in bad shape. They were taken care of. This is the front steps. Again, those palm trees have been there for a long time. <laughs> this is inside 311 in about 1936. That's my grandmother, my father, and his friend Jack Foreman. And I'll say more about Jack in a little bit. Jack and his parents lived across the street at the uh, Biltmore Apartments. I still have this train set. <laughs> <laughs> was, was she working at Bullock's World she, Shire? No, well, she worked downtown at Bullock's, and my father always said that she worked at Bullock's Wilshire, but I'm not sure about that, too. She may have gone and worked at Bullock's Wilshire also. Um, my grandmother, my, grand, my, my father, rather, was famously frugal. Oh, yes. My wife will attest to that. She'll tell you that the Depression still goes on in our house. <laughs> My grandmother was a queen of frugality. She, she saved her money. To save money, she and my father would go down to the public library at night so she could turn the lights off in their apartment and not have to heat it. And he would do his homework and they, she'd read it. And they'd go home. And they shopped at the Grand Central Market. Uh, this is a later photo, obviously, but the Grand Central Market's been there since 1917, and it hasn't changed all that much. 
they would, she would go down and shop on Saturday late, just before closing, because that's when you could get the best bargains. Next slide. There's my dad with his bicycle out in front of 311. Now, this is full of families. Bunker Hills, full of families. Uh, next slide. There's some of his friends, neighborhood kids. They're the ones that were running up and down the street when John Fonte would walk out of the Alta Loma and go down, take the Angel's Flight down to um, the FP Faye building. What is that child in the middle wearing? An Angora sweater? It looks like it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he probably went down to the Goodwill store, yeah. right, on, on Broadway, and he thought that was pretty cool, and he bought it. I agree. <laughs> Some more friends. And this is Jack Foreman we saw with my father with the train set, uh, who I said lived across the, across the street. Now, Jack had a movie camera. This is one of those wind up, let it go, and it burrs, right? They couldn't afford the film. So it was empty. But <laughs> when the Academy Awards were held at the Biltmore, it, it was just like today. You know, the movie stars would come in their limos and everybody would be out there to see them. Jack and my dad would go down there with this camera and Jack would wind it up and turn it on and everybody would say, Oh, he's got a camera, let them up in front. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my father's photos. You'll see some of these photos he took with, a, I think, with a Kodak brownie camera and they're kind of askew, but I put them in because he took them. And he wrote down here, Angel's Flight. Um, Angel's Flight was not the nostalgic anachronism that it is now. It was a piece of public transportation. People commuted on it, going downtown to go shopping and go to their jobs and everything. Although many of them, next slide, like my dad, took the stairs to save the nickel. This is the depression. And uh, how many stairs were there? 123. But as John Fonte said in his farewell to Bunker Hill, when he took the stairs, he'd try to count them and get mixed up about 100. <laughs> this is up on Bunker Hill. We're in the little park that's at the end of 3rd Street where it bit ends into Bunker Hill Avenue. And I'm sorry, I know this doesn't make sense to you, but later I'm going to show you a street, a Google Street View tour of Bunker Hill, and you'll see this. This is uh, uh, Hope Street down here. That's the western end of the 3rd Street Tunnel. So that's 3rd Street going out west to Crown Hill up here. The Harbor Freeway is going to go through here one day. Uh, this is uh, Flower. That's Figueroa. That is the Fremont Avenue School. There's still a Fremont Avenue over there. Um, and that's where my father went to elementary school. Don't change it yet. I, I want to just point out one other thing. That's the St. Regis, which is on Flower. That's another one of these apartment houses. Next slide. Jack Webb grew up there. You old enough to know who Jack Webb was? Drag that, right? Um, grew up. He went to. He lived there. Grew up there. And he went to high school with my dad. So now my father would come down from uh, the castle, walk down Hope to these stairs, go down the stairs, down here, up Third Street, to go to uh, the Fremont Avenue School and later to Belmont High School. You can see the public library poking up above the crown of Hope. Next slide. And there we are at the Fiesta Day at uh, Fremont Avenue Elementary School. Next slide. Slide. Uh, my grandmother, I said, was famously frugal. Well, she was a queen of frugality. She saved her money, and by 1937, she could buy the castle and 333. She owned those outright. They had long since become rooming houses, and so they were already rooming houses when she bought them. This is looking south on South Montreal Avenue. There's the castle. Now, one thing that you might notice is it's lost its uh, mansard roof over the turret here. It's lost the um, awning, the roof that was over the second story porch. The reason for that is the 1932 earthquake happened and they got damaged. So when she bought it, she took them off. <laughs> and my father tells a story about he'd just gotten into Los Angeles in 1932 when the earthquake happened. He was eight years old and he was shooting marbles after school. Fortunately, it was after school. 
because a lot of schools fell down. Um, and you'll see you shot the marble, everything started jumping and all over the place. It was an earthquake. <laughs> We'd never seen an earthquake before. I'll go back once more. So I, I said the Hendersons, the family that my grandmother came from, had moved out of here. And they sort, of, they sort of sealed up the real estate down here, this south at the end of South Park Hill Avenue, by front of 4th Street. She owned this, she owned this. You can't see it, but Uncle Mickey owned the salt box, which is just behind here. There's a little house down here that I think they own too, and that's the one that Uncle Lawrence owned. Oh, that's the crest hall. Next slide. That's the salt box. Uncle Mickey owned that. That was a rooming house too. Next slide. There's my great grandmother and my Aunt Evelyn, her daughter, my grandmother's sister, out in front of the salt box. Next slide. And there's my great grandmother standing on the porch of that little house that's down there. So I think they own that one too. And that's the crest hall on the corner. And there she is with her my great grandfather standing out in front of the crest hall. Next slide. This is the shot is taken up inside the, on the one of the upper stories of the crest hall. Looking east down 4th Street and Grand. That's the Zelda, which I mentioned before. And you'll see it again in a minute for an important reason to me. And that's the Hershey Mansion that I showed you way earlier. They moved it over here, they cut it in half, expanded it, and turned it into a rooming house. <laughs> now, I put this in because this is a much earlier time than the last slides that I was showing you, but it shows the original Los Angeles High School, which is on Fort Moore Hill. Um, that, uh, that moved in 1917, I think, to the present location of Los Angeles High School. They turned that into Central Junior High. Although this building had been taken down when my father went to Junior High School. But the other reason I put this in here is that that's Elysian Park. That's where Dodger Stadium is. This is Central. Actually, I think this is probably when it was still the high school. But this is the extension that they built on. And the next slide shows that. It's really hard to find photographs of when it was Central Junior High. But this is the junior high school. This is Fort Moore Hill. To get your orientation, there's City Hall. There's the Hall of Justice. There's Union Station. After the war, Hollywood Freeway went right through there. <laughs> uh, Central Junior High School was damaged. Central Junior High School was damaged during the earthquake and eventually they tore it down. So he actually went half day sessions when he was in junior high school to Belmont High School. Went back to Central Junior High School when it was reconstructed for a short time and then went to Belmont High School where he graduated in uh, 1941 when he was 16 years old. Um, he went to work, uh, worked at uh, a grocery store from 7 in the morning to noon and from 5 to 10, seven days a week for $10 a week, among other jobs. He sold newspapers at the upper pavilion of the Angels Flight, saved his money, bought a car, and in September 1941, he enrolled at UCLA, where you had to take ROTC, and the ROTC an instructor there said there was a war coming, and my father said, I'm 17 years old, I haven't had any fun. So he dropped out of UCLA and went to work. Um, he worked at Lockheed Vega uh, and thought, well, maybe I'm in the aircraft industry, I won't have to get drafted. Next slide. I was wrong. <laughs> and then he spent that home on leave uh, in uh, late November 1943. Uh, in front of 333, there was a beautiful poinsettia of uh, wish out there. Next slide. And all of his friends ended up in the military. This is a guy named Ernest Bradbury. I don't know whether it's the same Bradbury as in the family. In the same place. That's Richard Marker, uh, another childhood friend of yours. Is, in those days, everybody's father was in the military. And this is Jack Foreman that you saw earlier. Jack went in the Air Force also into uh, photo reconnaissance where they took P-38s and stripped all the armaments off of them, put cameras on them and flew reconnaissance flights. This is in New Guinea. When Jack came home from World War II, remember his movie camera and this experience with photo reconnaissance, 
He went to SC Cinema School and he became, eventually, the president of the Goldman Studios in Hollywood. And the first time the Hollywood sign was saved, Jack was in charge of that. Polio your father's Polio. Polio. Well, I have something to say about polio. I remember when polio vaccine was invented, and we were some of the first kids to get the polio vaccine in school, where they took us down and lined us all up, rolled up our sleeves, and gave us a polio soft vaccine. But before that, when I was a kid, uh, the kid next door, one of the boys next door, got polio. And we had all been playing together, and we were every summer the big scare in the neighborhood was who's going to get polio. It's a different, different time. Well, remember I said my parents. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is going on? Battery. Yeah, yeah. Um, my parents met in Las Vegas uh, after whirlaway courtship lasting several weeks. They got here and they had me. And we came back to Bunker Hill after the war. And that's why my earliest childhood memories are of Bunker Hill. We drove our Chevy back. Didn't this break down in the desert, Mama? Isn't that the story? Yeah. Um, and uh, this is uh, a photograph that uh, George Mann did. Uh, looking north, and I'm so happy that he did this because I, <laughs> I have vague memories of what this side of the street looked like. Because <laughs> photographers always take a picture of a belly straight on, and you always wonder, why wouldn't they just turn the camera and look down the street so you can see the context, right? That's a picture of 310. That's where we lived when we came back to Bunker Hill. We, we managed this building, too. My grandmother ended up managing 60 rooms up there on Bunker Hill. And if you look really closely at that window, next slide, you'll see a little kid looking out the window. <laughs> That's me. I spent a lot of time looking out that window. <clears throat> uh, now, remember these were built a long time ago. Um, if you know about lead poisoning, they say that it's sweet and that's why kids will eat the paint chips and stuff like that. I know that taste. <laughs> I know that taste. <laughs> that window still had my teeth marks in it. <laughs> what was I looking out the window at besides that old car? The Fosse and Dell, the Heindel, uh, building across the street. Next slide. This is my friend Harp. This is Ollie Harp. Uh, and, but we very affectionately simply called her Harp. She was my friend. This is Easter. Uh, she was our on-site manager. She, she had worked for my grandmother and she became our on-site manager. And she lived in the, what was the front parlor of the castle. So I spent a lot of time in that room um, with her. This is Easter Sunday, 1947. I'm out in front of 333 sitting on the step. What? <laughs> That's a cute kid, is not it? Um, and now I'm pointing across the street at something. I think I'm probably pointing across the street at the back end of the, ca uh, the Capitol Hotel. Remember I said the Fleur de Lis would became the Capitol Hotel. Our friend, the Mar friends, the markers owned that. Uh, but you can see, yeah, I was on Old Bunker Hill and I'm in front of the castle. Next slide. That's my Uncle Mickey Hill in the salt box. And I, he's got me up on the retaining wall in front of his lawn in front of the uh, salt box. This is a hill. Uneven. There are lots of retaining like walls like this all over Bunker Hill, and that's me crawling up on the, his lawn in a position where, about ten years later, next slide, George Mann stood up there and took that picture. <laughs> that's the Capitol. That was down on Grand. The front of it was on Grand. The back of end of it was up on South Bunker Hill Avenue. The markers lived here. Uh, Noah and Myrtle Mark. Uh, down in that, that unit, and they, they owned the, the building. And we would go down, we did uh, go in the back end of it, and walk down several flights to the here and go visit them. And I love going to see them because I had the best time there. Next slide. That's uh, Myrtle. Uh, we call her Nano. They're my godparents. Next slide. And that's Noah. We called him Dad. So this is Nano and Dad. 
uh, this is actually out at the place they had in Sunland. They they lived down on Bunker Hill during the weekend. On the weekends, they go to their place out in Sunland. And that's me and my dad out in front of uh, Bunker Hill. And this is the driveway between 333 and the salt box over there. This, uh, there's a big parking area behind that. That's me behind the salt box. And there were still some families up there, so I had some, some playmates. Next slide. And it, Bunker Hill continued to mature. When we came back up to the war, it hadn't changed much from what it had been like before. Next slide. But it was getting older. What did we do for entertainment? There was no TV. So my mother's diary uh, informs me that they went to the movies three, uh, two or three times a week and left me with Hart. Hart took care of me. This is Broadway. There were, and there still are, a bunch of movies theaters down here, but they all worked in those days. And they all showed movies and double bills and it cost less than a quarter, I think. But they came to the movies a lot. And some people call this the great white way of the West for obvious reasons. Do you remember when Burt Lancaster went up to Bunker Hill? And oh, I've got a picture of Oh, yeah. <laughs> Next slide. What was the skyline dominated by down there? The Edison building? But the Edison lighted up. This is at the, sitting at the corner of Grand and Fifth across from the library. Catty corner from the Beltmore Hotel. It's still there. Well, South Bunker Hill Avenue came down and ended up like this. And the Richfield Building. This was the greatest light show in Los Angeles. I don't know why they tore this thing down. <clears throat> well, I guess I know. It was an Art Deco masterpiece. Uh, it lasted 40 years. It was built in 1929 and came down in 1969, replaced by the Arco Twin Towers. And uh, it was that's pristine. A, that's, that's a flower and fit. Right, a flower and fit. It was pristine, and that was an oil derrick uh, with neon lights that shot up the side and like a gusher, and then that neon ball would light up at the top, and then it would go off and start all over again. Uh, and City Hall, that's what dominated the skyline. <clears throat> Life kind of revolved around the library. A lot of those retirees went down to the library. I think they all had library cards. They all spent a lot of time in the library reading because they had a lot of time. And they'd check out books and go back up on Bunker Hill. And we still shop at Grand Central Market, although my mother didn't like that very much because they wouldn't let you pick your own produce. <laughs> you get home and while it looked like it was a bargain, some of it you didn't want to eat. <laughs> um, downtown was still real busy, um, a real busy area. You're doing, you're fine. Okay, fine. all right. There's no one wants you to stop. You're okay. Fine. Don't worry. There's no one wants you to stop. All right. The, the, all the big department stores, the Broadway, May Company, um, Bullock's, Robinson's, institutions that had lasted decades and decades in Los Angeles and I grew up with and I thought they would last forever. They're all gone. But they were they had their flagship uh, stores downtown. And that's where you went to shop. That's where everybody went to shop. When, when, it, when school was going to start, you needed school clothes, that's where you went. So we would drive, even though we had, oh, well, I'm getting ahead of the story, we would go shop there. Um, but the sidewalks were just thick with people uh, who worked down there and went shopping down there. Here's um, uh, Hershey Square at a later date. You can see the Biltmore has been built. It was built in 24, I think. Um, and there's the Oviat building, which is still there. And I have this here because across, from, across the street from the Oviat building, next slide, was the greatest Clifton's there was. Now, I did like the Brookdale, and I hope they open it again, because we used to go there. But this is the Pacific Seas, Clifton's. Yeah. This was the best place. I loved going there. Now, another story. When my parents got married during the war, they came to Los Angeles on their honeymoon. They stayed at uh, Nan Wendato's place up in Sunland. And where did he take her for dinner? Clifton's. <laughs> And there we are at Clifton's. My father, my mother, me, uh, my mother's brother, uh, Don, and I don't know who that guy is, another Navy friend. And I don't know who that lady is back there. <laughs> now, Hart 
would take care of me. My, um, we um, would go, Harp, Harp liked the seashore. And Harp would take me, uh, we'd go down to the red car terminal, we'd get on the red car, and we would go, slide. Uh, that's not a red car, but it, uh, it serves a purpose. Uh, we had the best interurban light rail system in the world in Los Angeles. We'd go to the Pike. Harp liked to go to the Pike down in Long Beach. Now, I said that looking at old slides are fascinating and looking at the details. That signal hill up there, look at the oil one up there. It's the top of signal hill. Next slide. That's me and my mother out in front of that cape, crepe myrtle tree on uh, in front of the castle. This is my sister Peggy, she got born. And um, we joined the exodus of families moving off of Bunker Hill. After the war, there was a big exuberance, big influx of people, big exuberance of development. The San Fernando Valley filled it with housing tracts, a lot of other parts of Los Angeles, and the families that could afford it and wanted the American dream moved into those housing tracts. We moved to Westchester, out by the airport. However, we still own the properties. My father did maintenance on them, and when I well, I wasn't old enough to help him, but I would go down with him on the weekends when we did maintenance. And uh, I'd go to the library. I'd wandered all over Bunker Hill. When I was a little kid, I, I think I was seven, eight, certainly nine years old, I walked by myself all over Bunker Hill. Uh, now, remember, the LA Times says that this is a, a blighted slum that's full of crime. <laughs> and I walked around all by myself down there because my father grew up there. I guess he thought it was safe. <laughs> I think it was. <clears throat> About the same time, late 40s, this is the beginning of the end. They established the CRA, which is the Community Redevelopment Agency. Remember I said in the 1920s they said that the, uh, yeah, if you have to go, I, I won't be offended, but um, uh, anyway, the, they said that Bunker Hill had to be raised and gotten rid of and um, and there was a big push for that after um, World War II. Um, people um, in Los Angeles, Los Angeles had an inferiority complex. Um, they wanted to be, to rival New York and Philadelphia and Chicago and certainly San Francisco as one of the great cities in Los Angeles. Uh, so they were gonna make the city over uh, to be a great city. Next slide. I always said that Bunker Hill's problem was one of geography. It was too close to City Hall. They could, I could just picture, next slide, the City father sitting up there on center, uh, City Hall looking out the window, and this is a picture out the window of City Hall, saying to themselves, we gotta get rid of all those old buildings. It started with the construction of the freeways. Up on the north end, that's the four level interchange where the harbor and the Hollywood Freeway cross one another. There's City Hall. This is the old Hall of Records and the Hall of Justice. This is where Court Flight was. You'll see a number of pictures again. It's gone. It got uh, removed in the 40s. But that's where Court Flight was right there. <clears throat> this is some more teardown. Um, there's this Hall of Records. This is from up on um, City Hall. Um, that Hill Street Tunnel came out over here. The streetcar went in another tunnel over here. It's starting to look like a tornado just came through here. There, the tornado just really took everything out. Um, that's the house. That's Burt Lancaster's parents' house in Christmas, right there. Above the second, there's the Hill Street Tunnel tunnel, the north end of the Hill Street Tunnel. He gets off of a streetcar right here, takes a suitcase, walks up this, and goes up the front steps of that. that that's, about, that's about 10 minutes into the film, I think. Yeah. People want to look at that. Yeah. Next slide. There it is. You can see him there building the Hollywood Freeway out here. Next slide. This is the, Holly, the Harbor Freeway. Looking back east, you can see Bunker Hill in the foreground and uh, City Hall behind it. City Hall was the tallest building around. You know, that's the first thing you could see when you're coming towards downtown. This is also taken from the top of uh, 
City Hall, looking a little bit southwest. Uh, there's the Melrose. This is its annex. The Richelieu's over there. That's the dome. Uh, there's the Mission Apartment. There's the Argyle. Th these buildings all had names and personalities. No two were the same. There's, oh, no, I'm sorry. There's the uh, Hill Street Tunnel, the southern end of it. This is Hill Street. This is First Street. I, I had an epiphany some years ago when I started looking at these slides and I said, oh yeah, there was dirt down there. <laughs> I remember this little hillside. Next slide. Now, I don't know if this is going to work because it worked in PowerPoint, but it may not work here. Uh, here, watch this. Here's the Hall of Records. Watch that building. There's the tunnel. There's Brooke Lancaster's parents' house. There's the tunnel. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something's happening. Next slide. They built the courthouse. Now, this is what I don't know whether it will work. It would work in PowerPoint. Try that. No, there's a fade. There's the Hall of Records. There's that building I said to look at. The tunnel's gone. There's no tunnel. Hill Street goes straight through here. They built the uh, courthouses. That was the first thing that happened at that end of Bunker Hill. This is Court Street. That's where the court flight was. So you watch that building and that one and everything else disappear. This is where Grand Park is now. Uh, in a couple more slides, you'll see the Music Center and the Mark Taper Forum going up there. The next thing they did was the 4th Street cut down on the south end of it, and this is what happened to the Zelda. Here's the Zelda. Remember, I mentioned that before. It's an apartment building. Go back. This is in 1954 when they're going to tear it down. And they tore it down because the 4th Street cut, if you ever come off the Harbor Freeway going downtown, you go through a off-ramp that goes through Bunker, Bunker Hill and kind of a causeway. That's there because they did the 4th Street cut and they tore this down. Now, I remember when that happened because I was walking around Bunker Hill by myself on a Saturday and I could get into that when it was like that. And there was nobody to chase you away. And I'm ashamed to say, embarrassed to say, I threw rocks at windows. It pains me now to admit to that. Okay. Well, that, pardon, I'm going to ask you to stop just for one second. Yeah. Just take a breath. It's 2 o'clock. People may have sitters. They may have other... I, I don't want you... No one wants you to stop talking. But, but if people have to leave because they have other engagements, we're just going to take a breath. Okay. i got about 20 minutes. You're fine. No one wants you to stop talking. Okay. Well, they're going to they're gonna lock my car up in three, so i got to finish my day. <laughs> That's where the Zelda was. That's Grand. This is the Olive down here. Remember I said, remember those steps of the Fremont Hotel? Fremont's gone, because the Forest Street cut was going through here. The Crest Home was up there. That's South Bunker Hill Avenue. You can see the salt box up there. And they dug a roadway through there. Grand has been blocked off while they're doing this. Next slide. And then they build a bridge over it. So this is where you drive now. There's the Biltmore Apartments where Jack Foreman and his family live. There's the Lovejoy at the corner of 3rd and Grand. Next slide. 1950s on Bunker Hill. Awaiting our fate, losing a few friends, but remaining largely intact. There's the Melrose in the 50s. This is a George Mann photograph at the corner of 2nd and, um, and uh, Grand. Grand. Um, it's a rooming house at this point. Um, what was it like in these places? Um, quiet. Bunker Hill, especially South Bunker Hill Avenue, was quiet. Um, these are largely elderly people that are living up here. Um, many of them don't have televisions, or they might. Uh, they're living alone. There are not a lot of conversations in the rooms. You can hear the radio, old radio programs, uh, music, classical music, big band music. Um, all, all the, the interiors of these things are interesting. My recollection is that there were a lot of lamps with lampshades. 
uh, and the incandescent light bulbs that cast shadows into the corners of the room. But that's my recollection. But <clears throat> and some kind of creepy places that look like the monsters of the Adams family <laughs> lived there. But people were, many people were still taking care of their properties. Um, the CRA made its intentions known when it was formed in the late 40s, and they said they were going to raise all this and just tear it all down, which is what they did. Um, so a lot of people who owned these properties kind of neglected them because they thought it was going to be torn down anyhow, and they're not going to do any maintenance on them. So for a period of 15 going on 20 years, not a lot of maintenance was done, although my dad and I went down there and we changed, we fixed leaky faucets, we painted, we did all that kind of stuff. This is um, west of Bunker Hill. That's Bunker Hill up there. This is the west end of the Third Street Tunnel. Um, this is Flower, right at about the corner of Figueroa and uh, Third Street. If you read uh, uh, John Fonte, this is where the Japanese grocer was located that gave him fruit <laughs> up here on this corner. There's the castle. Next slide. This is the, the second street. There's the Argyle. Um, a lot of these places were still there. Next slide. There's the corner of Grand Avenue at 3rd. There's the Nugent. That's 301 that my grandmother turned in into a rooming house along with that one. There's the Lovejoy which is an apartment building. There's the Angel Flight Pharmacy. This is, we're across the street now, looking back this way, we're looking east on 3rd Street. This is Grand. This is Angel Flight Pharmacy. There's the Lovejoy. Um, and we're on a, high, a little bit of a rise because the 3rd Street went up to South Montreal Avenue where it dead ended. Different buildings. There's the um, Astoria, down by Angel Flight. Uh, we're still there. Next slide. This is Clay Street that ran uh, between, it ran north and south between Olive and Hill. It was crossed by um, Angel's Flight. Next slide. I should mention, who lived up there besides these old people? Somebody asked me what, about diversity on Bunker Hill. And my recollection was that it was mostly whites, Asians, and Hispanics. And the 1940 census came out recently, so I've been poking around through that, looking, because they record that. And I was right. And my recollection is that's correct. Uh, there are also, if you see Kent McKenzie's um, movie, um, The Exiles, there was a group of young Native Americans living up there, too, in the late 50s and 60s. This is the Mission Apartment. This is the intersection of Olive and 2nd Street. That's the Chance Peak, and there's the dome. Go ahead. These, these old buildings became the uh, grounds where they did all the noir films. Uh, there were a lot of movies shot up here, and Jim Book tells us all about those. I'm indebted to him for uh, all that information. Next slide. There's the Sunshine Apartments that was in a bunch of the movies. Uh, Criss Cross and many others. Next slide. And there's the, uh, another shot of it. That was across from uh, the Angel's Light. Next slide. And unfortunately, this is not going to run, but this is a clip from the greatest of all the noir films, Kiss Me Dead, because it was shot at a castle. <laughs> I remember that. I was nine years old, and I thought, that is the greatest thing in the world. It's like having a movie star in our family, because our building is in a movie. Uh, I don't think this will play. I can, but they need to... No. I don't think so. Anyway, Ralph Meeker is a detective. Is this, uh, um, go back a minute. Ralph Meeker is a detective who's investigating the disappearance of, and death of this young girl that he runs into on a highway. And um, it's all about this thing called the what's it that's in this box that's sort of maybe nuclear and could explode, and he's looking for that, and people get killed and chased around. But she supposedly lived at three, and they use the right address, 325 South Buckfield Avenue in the movie. So he drives up there and parks his car and goes inside. So um, go back one slide. If you want to see what the stained glass doors, the beautiful stained glass doors look like, go to this movie and watch it. Unfortunately, it's in black and white. You don't get the full effect. <laughs> go ahead. But that's all we have left.
and they actually go inside the uh, entry of uh, the castle. I said we lost a few friends. There is a Melrose coming down about 1956 or 57. I remember the day that that happened and it just broke my heart. That was such a great, great building. The dome actually lasted into the 1960s when it too came down because somebody set it on fire. Right. Do you want to quickly talk about the suspicion of arson for the, the dome? Why they set it on fire? Um, you, you suspect well, it yeah. We don't we, know. We don't know for sure. People were resisting the um, demolition of Bunker Hill. And the fellow who owned the dome was uh, a big resistor. And so they think maybe, they called these fire traps that they were inevitably going to burn down and they were unsafe and everything else. Well, somebody made sure that everybody knew that. Uh, we think. We don't know. This is the uh, Rousseau house. Um, I didn't point this out, but that picture of my dad and his friend uh, by the car with the dog was taken out in front of the Rousseau. You can see the Rousseau behind it. Uh, I was used in a lot of movies as well. Uh, started to deteriorate at this point, and you can see that the places around it uh, are gone. <coughs> Next slide. But this end of South Long Hill Avenue remained relatively untouched for a long time. Um, there's a fire plug. That, I, that fire plug, I pretended that was a horse. <laughs> I'd sit on that and I'd ride my horse because I really wanted to have a horse. <laughs> There's a castle, quietly aging, but pretty well, I think, at this point. Next slide. This is behind the castle in 333. Um, this was taken some time later. This is after um, the CRA took it over, I think, maybe, um, because it wasn't as messy as that. But this is a big parking area that we had back in here. That, that looks like a storm cellar was the entrance into the basement underneath 333. You could go down, the, you could stand up and walk around in the basement. There was an electric light on the, hanging from the ceiling. Um, it was paved. Um, and my father had his workbench down there and kept all his tools. And the tenants would store things they didn't need in trunks down there, in suitcases. And when they moved away, or as was often the case, died, those things stayed down there, and I don't know what happened to them. I always wondered what treasures were in those trunks and suitcases, or maybe horrors, as some of you will know, they found an old trunk in a place here in Los Angeles and the mummified fetus in it a few years ago. Who knows what was down there? And Leo Politi and other artists would come down and uh, rue the fact that all this was going and try to uh, document it. Slide. And he did a lot of paintings, uh, paintings of the castle. Next slide. We get an idea, maybe, of the stained glass windows. Not really. But he was a good artist, and, and we're thankful that he did all of this, among other artists. Next slide. Now, I'm going to take you on a visit to my neighborhood. We're going to do, I call it a Google Quotes Street View tour of Bunker Hill Avenue. And you'll meet some of our friends along the way. You've already met some of them, but go ahead. Now, we're going to start down here. This is Jim Dawson's map again. Uh, get on the uh, Angel's Flight. Go up. Get off up here at the, uh, at the upper terminus on uh, Olive. We're going to walk down 3rd Street, cross Grand, go up to South Bunker Hill Avenue, turn right and go to the corner of 2nd and uh, South Bunker Hill, and then go back and go to the corner of 4th and South Bunker Hill Avenue. Okay. So, let's cross the street, get on Angel's Flight. <clears throat> and we're going to start up the hill. <clears throat> now, this was the greatest thrill ride that a kid could have because those cars look like they're on the same track and they're going to hit head on. And at the last minute, they swerve past each other and narrowly miss by literally a couple of inches. <laughs> and that pass happened right at the cutout of the Third Street Tunnel. So if you were in Olivet going downhill on this side, it looked like you're going to get thrown off over the precipice. And all this is happening above Clay Street. Next slide. Way up there. I couldn't believe that that car stayed on the track, but it did all those years. The um, new incarnation or the reincarnation of it, they moved it down half a block just past the uh, Grand Central Market. The experience is nothing like what it was.
was. <laughs> it was in the original location. It's great to have it. I'm, I'm so happy we still have it, but it's nothing like that. So we get off at the upper terminus, give the man our money, walk out into the pavilion, weigh ourselves on this scale, because this was here for decades. <laughs> Take a look down, this is Miller Sheets' photograph, or, or photograph of his painting, uh, which is still hanging in LA, Black 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 LA Black Black. Yeah. And look down 3rd Street. Now this area was a small commercial area. All of your needs could be pretty much could be met within walking distance on Bunker Hill or downtown. And that's what people did. There's a liquor store if you needed that. There was a uh, bar over here. Go back. Uh, shoe repairs, got cleaners, various things. We're going to walk over here and turn around and look back at the <clears throat> the uh, Angel's Flight Station. Next one. There's the Astoria next to it. Next slide. And we're going to walk down 3rd Street past the budget basket. The little market that was up there. We went in there a lot. Uh, we're going to stop in and this is Angel's Flight Pharmacy. And there, you can see there's a newsstand here. There's a newspaper man selling newspapers. We're going to go in and say hi to the grocer who's standing right there. There he is. Little girl buying eight or milk. Uh, Wonder Bread, which built strong and bones 26 ways. <laughs> I don't think she's buying any of those or this. Available. Next slide. And stop and talk to the newspaper man who sold newspapers out in front of the Angel's Flight Pharmacy. Next slide. There he is. There's 311. Yeah. <laughs> Don't stand next to the wall. Oh, what kind of strange radiation comes out there? <laughs> Where my uh, my grandmother and father uh, father lived. Next slide. And go ahead and see the pharmacist. These are all uh, strange screenshots that came off of uh, Kent McKenzie's film documentary film uh, Bunker Hill 1956, which if you haven't seen, you ought to get it. Hold up, if you want to know what Bunker Hill looked like. That's, that's available on the metadata for the DVD of the Technicans and the Exiles. Yes, yeah. the Exiles is his masterpiece. He was a uh, cinema student at USC in 1956. He used to hang around up on Bunker Hill and he did this documentary and he followed those Native Americans around and he made the Exiles, the movie The Exiles. <coughs> Next slide. Now we're going to go out and look at the Lovejoy, which is on the north um, east corner and the uh, Nugent, which is over here, which is part of the New Grand Hotel, and there's a delicatessen in there. And when we would come up from Angel's Flight down, downtown on a hot day and walk down 3rd Street, I used to like to stop in there and have, uh, have a Pepsi Cola, because you could pull that out of the cooler. You know those, those coolers that had water inside of them and you take the, the bottle on? Probably cost about a nickel, I suppose, and it was the best Pepsi Cola I had ever. So we're going to look, oh, wait a minute. Who's that? Coming up in his Nash, up Grand Avenue, turning the corner. And he parked there, and that's Dick Powell getting out of his car, and he's going to go in here. This is from the movie, um, Cry Danger. <clears throat> OK, now we've come up the little rise to South Bunker Hill Avenue and look back where we came from. There's the Love Joy. There's the Nugent. There's the Angel Flight Pharmacy, because this came up. <clears throat> Next slide. And turn around as we're coming up and look at the Alta Vista, which was sitting up here on South Bunker Hill Avenue on the north east, uh, west corner, although 3rd Street dead ended right here. So we're right there. And now we're going to turn and go this way. We're going to stop and see Rose, who took care of all the neighborhood uh, animals. She's in uh, Leo Politi's book of Bunker Hill. This is a, f a picture from uh, George Mann, uh, the cat lady. Next slide. Uh, we're going to go past the Brousseau. And my father was photographed over here with his car with his friend in the Navy uniform and the uh, dog over here looking that way. Next slide. Down to the second street corner of South Bunker Hill Avenue where this building sat. That was the nicest renovation uh, at that time. Somebody wanted to make this look like what now looks like Carroll Avenue. And I think the reason Carroll Avenue survived is that it was too far away from City Hall. They couldn't see it, even with binoculars. <laughs> We're going to walk back down the street, go past the 
Alta Vista, the little park is over there now, yeah, it's over there. Look at the size of these palm trees. These are planted, I think, in the 1880s, and by the, the 19, late 50s, they got to be pretty big. Next slide. Now, we're down below, this is the west end of the Third Street Tunnel, and I show this because that's where the little park is, that's the Alta Vista. And if you've read, right. Ask the Dust, Leo, I mean, uh, Arturo Bandini, this building was built on what he called the decline of the hill. So the street level is up here, but he had an apartment down here, and he could climb in and out the window of the apartment without having to climb back up to the street level. <laughs> There's the park. This is an era when gentlemen, oh well, men, wore suits and coats and ties every day, and wore hats. These old guys sat up there, those are the retirees, talking to one another, to their passers-by, and fed the pigeons. Now, we're, we were looking over here at the little park. Now we're turned and we're looking down South Buckreel Avenue. That's 3rd Street coming up. And we're going to walk down there. And we're going to stop at 310 where I said, there's a little kid looking out that window. This is Leo Politi's uh, painting of it. Next slide. This is a photograph that my dad took in the 30s of that same building because we rented this one out and he lived up there. Next slide. There I am. Okay. Next slide. That's what I'm looking at. That's the Foss Heindel building. Um, and I always wondered, why don't they paint that place? Because it's just raw wood. And uh, next slide. I realized recently, the reason they didn't paint that is that that building was used in lots of noir films. And it would have been like a successful character actor getting a facelift and he'd never work again. <laughs> next slide. So here we are on uh, looking down. We've been here before, but there's a castle from 333. South Bunker Hill Avenue was the most residential of the streets up there. Uh, it dead-ended down at 4th, and it was not a thoroughfare like Grand and Olive where cars would, would go through. The only reason you'd come up here is if you lived here, or you were visiting somebody you knew, or you were up to some nefarious thing. But there's no other reason to come up here. So it was a pretty quiet street. That street doesn't exist now? Is it doesn't exist anymore. I'll show you what's there now. Next slide. So the castle is gracefully aging. This is the way I remember it. Um, I didn't mention what happened to my grandmother. I'm sorry. I should have done that. 19, on her birthday, April 3rd, 1943, she had a bad cold, or what everybody thought was a bad cold. 1943? 1943. Um, and uh, she was, her mother had been drafted two months before in London. And uh, so she was alone there. And uh, remember all the Hendersons lived up there. And she didn't get up one morning. She didn't, didn't know what happened to her. So uh, one of the brothers climbed in the window. And they're sitting up dead in a chair. She had pneumonia. And nobody knew it. There weren't any antibiotics in those days anyhow. So. She died. Uh, my father said that was the worst day of his life when he found out. He was in the hospital in um, Florida with pneumonia, too. But when he came back from World War II, he was the landlord for the 60 rooms. Uh, so here it is. Next slide. Uh, this won't play either, but this is from uh, Kent McKenzie's 1956 documentary. Um, and he. Um, shot up, up there, and, and one of the things you'll see, going, I don't think I have, yeah, there, this is from, this is a screenshot from, there's Harp, water in the lawn. There's the porch, just looking around, um, just across from the castle, looking back, there's the Foss Heindel building, next slide. There's the fire plug, watch what happens to that a little bit, go ahead. Next slide. We're looking back where we just came, we came from that corner, this way, next slide. <clears throat> and this um, was another George Mann photograph. After the um, 4th Street cut happened, they realigned this street and called it 4th Place. The Crest Home used to be out here, and that little house that my grandmother, great-grandmother was on the porch of was here and the Crest Home was down here. The real line is called it fourth place, although strangely in other photographs it's called third place. I don't know why. Um, 
and we're looking back now at the, the side of the salt box and 333, and this is just a lot now, where the Crest Hall used to be. 1959, the City Council approves the Bunker Hill Urban Renewal Plan, and everybody knew what was going to happen, and started making plans for leaving the hill. There's Hart with my sister Peggy and Martha. Martha's here. Um, Hart, Hart is 79 years old at this point, and everybody knew they had to leave, so Hart married Alan, who was one of our tenants, and left. And now Harp, I said, loved the seashore. Alan liked the mountains. So where did they move? Next slide. Placerville. And here's the happy newlyweds. In Next slide. We had moved, in 1959, we moved to Honolulu. Uh, before we moved, we went down to Bunker Hill and said goodbye to everybody. We went to see Nano and Dado, and they were resigned to losing the uh, capital, and they were going to move up to the to Sunland, to their place there. And uh, But we still owned the property. And we uh, hired a uh, management company to take care of them, and they did after a fashion. Next slide. This is in the early 60s, and I, Nathan Marsak gave me the, uh, the, this photograph. Hart would never have allowed that. <laughs> um, and it's kind of fallen apart, unfortunately. But the stained glass doors are still there, and you can see inside. Um, I graduated from high school in 63, and I, I came back to go to USC. And I went up there then, and uh, it was still there. And I went inside because I figured it was my right, we owned it, and uh, looked around. And unfortunately, when I got there, these were gone. There was plywood where the windows were, and I don't know what happened to them. I'm sure that somebody walked up to somebody who was sitting in this chair and said, I'll give you $25 for those, and they said, sure. <laughs> this is the salt box at about the same era. Go ahead. The CRA is tearing everything down except this, because that's their office. <laughs> Next slide. Now, they built the music center. They haven't built Mark Taper Forum yet. The dome is still over there. The Chaspeak's still there, so is the mission. Next slide. This is from the uh, Crown Hill looking east. You can see City Hall. Bunker Hill is almost gone, except there's the castle. And it stayed there for a long time. That's the tunnel down there. This is that little park I showed all the gentlemen sitting in. Next slide. And they started tearing everything down. Now, in 1964, the castle and the salt box, but not 333, were made cultural historic monuments, which meant they couldn't turn them down. And, um, and the CRA thought, well, gosh, or somebody thought we should say something. So because this was pretty much the last of what was there, now, uh, there's a reason behind that. We moved to Honolulu, and the CRA sent us a letter. I still have these letters. My father kept them. They said, uh, okay, we're ready to, uh, to, to acquire your property. Uh, we're ready to do that, so uh, we'd like to negotiate with you about that. Or, there really is no negotiation. The negotiation was, take the check or we take your houses without a check. Um, and my father, we're living in, in Honolulu, and there's not a lot of instant communication. You could pick up the phone and call, but people didn't do that in those days. They, they wrote letters. And um, my father kind of set it aside and kind of ignored it. And uh, because I have another letter that said, from the CRA that says, maybe you didn't get our previous letter. <laughs> so, um, next slide. You can see them, they're sitting right over there all by the lonesome. This is a temporary parking garage, but it's still there. <laughs> it's called temporary at the time. Next slide. They put a chain link fence around the two of them. And they sat there for five years, unoccupied, um, deteriorating. I, there's the parking, there's the fire club, next slide. And people came up and took lots of pictures like this. 
about the demise of Bunker Hill. Next slide. And there's a salt box with its chain link fence. Now I was at SC then, and I would go back by myself just because it drew me back. And I, w I had a book of tickets for the Angel's Flight, and I'd park up here and I'd just ride up and down on the Angel's Flight because I had the tickets. Next slide. And take pictures. The Capitol is gone, and you can see the buildings up on South Bunker Hill Avenue. Take the next one. And this is a famous picture. This is the one that you see about the demise of Bunker Hill all the time with the Union Bank looming behind these poor buildings. Next slide. This is moving day. What did they do with them? Well, after five years, they decided they were going to move them over to next to the Pasadena Freeway and the Arroyo to become the founding buildings of Heritage Square, what's now Heritage Square. And we were thrilled because, you know, they were going to save our buildings. Next slide. There's the fire plug. So they cut them up and they moved them now. They paid us some money, but they took them. Yeah. This was the biggest um, eminent domain acquisition in the history of eminent domain. And they, they moved 9,000 people off Bunker Hill. They said they were going to find new places for them. They said they were going to build low-cost housing for them up here. Remember, these are all elderly retirees. They didn't see it. Uh, but the reason they could cut these buildings up and move them is that these things were built out of redwood, which resists rot and termites and everything, and they were in great condition uh, as far as that's concerned. Although, in those five years, people did jump that fence and go inside those buildings and they trashed them. Uh, I, I went up there, but I never jumped the fence and went inside. Thanks. So that's why they could do that to these buildings. They, they held together. They moved them to Heritage Square. They started putting them back together. They went to so much trouble. The CRA gave some money to do this. And they didn't do anything to protect them. And within six months, arson is burning down. So one day, I used, we lived out in Pasadena, and I would commute to SC on the Pasadena Freeway, and I would follow what was going on in the, in the reconstruction of them and everything. And I drove by one day, and poof, they're not there anymore. Looks like maybe you could save some of them. Turn, next slide. Next slide. Nope. No, I don't think so. Next slide. Meanwhile, back at the scene of the original crime, <laughs> they're hard at work moving the top of Bunker Hill off of the top of Bunker Hill. Next slide. Remember this picture? Next slide. That's what they did. The cubic miles of dirt. Bunker Hill used to be much higher than it is now. Um, and carted it away. Next slide. <clears throat> They're gone. And so is the Richfield Tower, because the Arco Twin Towers are there now. Next Gordon, slide. I think that all went to the side of the brickyard in, in Montebello. Yes. Yes. Next slide. Brickyard number three. And a lot of that part of Bunker Hill sat up here empty for a long time. It took them literally a couple decades to build what's there now. And it went kind of fallow, almost pastoral. And I saw that this is a William Ray photograph. I saw this recently. And I thought, gee, what if they made it a park? Wouldn't that have been nice? So recently, Richard, this is we're going to conclude here couple of minutes. I'm, I'm not concerned. I don't think anyone well, sitting here is. Okay. <laughs> um, recently, Richard asked me, what's at the intersection of 3rd and Grand? What did I say? For five years. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, a few years ago. What did I say, Richard? Nothing. Next slide. <laughs> There's nothing there. There's nothing memorable, nothing um, that it distinguishes it from a thousand other intersections in a thousand other cities. Um, no buildings with the personality and names that the new old buildings used to have. Nothing that would make you want to go back for a second visit. Next slide. That's what's there now. I looked at this and I thought, you know, what, what is this? What does this remind me of? This reminds me architecturally of 
a musical drum, a monotone, a single note played over and over and over again to the sky. Whereas these buildings were like jazz, with all kinds of architectural riffs to delight the eye, all angles and shadows and carved details that were fascinating. Excellent. So this is the north east corner of Third and Grand. That's the Lovejoy. What's there now? That's the. What There's one a, is that? Uh, this is local. Third Street doesn't go through here anymore. It's a walkway into the Hyatt Hotel. Next slide. This is the um, southeast corner where the Angel's Flight Pharmacy was. Next slide. That's there. California Plaza is over there. Next slide. This is the southwest corner, 301, 303, that my grandmother turned into a rooming house. You go up the hill to South Bunker Hill Avenue, what's there now? That's there now. And you can tell they did something to alter the terrain because that goes down to Hope Street now. Next slide. There's the Nugent and the New Grand, the delicatessen with the Pepsi Cola on the northwest corner. Next slide. That's there now. Where's the Alta Vista? Next slide. That's just the same thing. Where's the Alta Vista? Remember it was up on South Bunker Hill Avenue? Next slide. It's about here. Because Third Street goes all the way through to Hope now. Now, where's Bunker Hill Avenue? Looking south from the corner of Third and South Bunker Hill Avenue, the little parks over there, there's the castle. There's 310 where we live. Next slide. There you are. There's South Park Hill Avenue. It doesn't exist anymore as a street. Next slide. Remember this one? Looking north on South Park Hill Avenue, 310. Next slide. That's, that would be it. Next slide. Remember the Capitol down on Grand? Looking west. Park, or, uh, castle's on the other side. Next slide. Got torn down so you can see that. There's South Park Hill Avenue up there. Next slide. This is Grand. That's where the Capitol sat. Where is the Where is the Where is the castle? No, that, next slide. It's up there. The court, the Wells Fargo Center. But remember, they took off the top of the hill. Where is it? It's up there. <laughs> it was the highest point on the hill. A great view. Uh, that picture uh, behind that, I used to go up there and look out the third street, the third story window and uh, look at West LA I'm up there. Next slide. Now if you want to get sort of an idea of where it was, go inside that courtyard, get on the elevator, go up to the mezzanine, get off the elevator, go over here and take a picture, which is what I did. That's about where the castle was. So Los Angeles, this is Los Angeles pre-war. That's it now. <clears throat> Next slide. But, you know, my father, when he discovered the um, arch photo archives uh, at the LA Public Library late in his life, and uh, was all excited and let us all know about it, because he's the one that found it, said uh, he, he wrote a bunch of descriptions of the different places that were photographed, and then he, at the bottom he said, it's all gone. And for a long time I thought that, you know, it's all gone. But as I wrote in the piece introducing this that Richard sent, it still exists. It just floats ethereally in memory above Hope and Grand and Olive and Hill Street. These buildings had a, as I, you may have heard me say this before, they had a quiet dignity and a timelessness that I just missed. Thank you.
This is my mother, Betty. You saw her picture when they were here. I think you and I are probably two of the very few people that not only remember Bunker Hill in those days, but actually lived up there, left in Los Angeles. And I think that's maybe true. Gordon, <laughs> thank you so much. That was just a fantastic talk. It really was. If you're here, so if people want to ask you questions, you have a lot to say. Yeah, right. you, you, you have some time. I only scratch it. Okay, I know. All right, so that's it. We've ran late. I appreciate your patience. I know Gordon. That was, yeah, that, that was fantastic. Thanks. Scott, where's Scott? Thanks, thank you. Everyone, thanks, Scott. But you, you, you set up the pop-up gallery. Are you going to be here for maybe another five, ten minutes? And people want to just yeah. But you're going to you're going to break. Yeah. You're start to break it up. But if people want to quickly get back and look and, and ask you questions, they can do that. We will see you next month. Uh, next month is 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 June, and our topic for next month will be Jazz Age Los Angeles. So Mark Chevalier is going to talk about Schwab's and Mark. Where's Mark? Mark, you're actually going to talk first because you called it. Yeah. Mark, 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 come up. Just come on up and just give people 30 seconds on what you're going to talk about next month as a teaser so they'll come back. Mark is a terribly gifted writer and he's going to be talking about the Garden of Allah. So Mark, just give us a little teaser. Okay, I wasn't prepared for this. Um, I write a series of novels set in the golden years of Hollywood at the, the Garden of Allah Hotel that stood at the corner of Sunset Boulevard and Crescent Heights. Um, it was a very unique setting full of all, all sorts of unique people, so I'll be talking about the history of that. Perfect. Fantastic. Okay, so thank you all so much for coming. What? Tomorrow. What? Tomorrow. Oh, yes, tomorrow. I don't want to forget. Tomorrow we have a free tour of the oldest Protestant cemetery in Los Angeles. It's on the website. It's Savannah Cemetery in El Monte. Uh, tour starts at 1230. We have five docents which make up the board of the cemetery board. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be right after the City of Roads meets memorial service. The back gate will be open, so we hope to see you there. If you can remember to sign up, please sign up so we have enough tour guides. And thank you so much, and we'll see you. We'll see you next month or on the bus or wherever on the street. Thank you.